Welcome back to a new video. Today's topic is cavitation and flashing in control bulbs. Let's start with the basics. Vapor pressure. What is vapor pressure? We all know that if you increase the temperature of a liquid, it will change from liquid to vapor. So that is at atmospheric pressure or at sea level. That's what we call it a boiling point. So let's reverse it. And we talk about what is the pressure at which the liquid change from liquid to vapor at a specific temperature. So in this case, we have water at a specific temperature, let's say 70 or 50, whatever. Keep the temperature constant. And we now reduce the pressure. Then we can see the liquid start to change from liquid phase or liquid state to vapor state that we call it the vapor pressure this table shows us what is the vapor pressure of water at a different temperature so this table you can see the vapor pressure of water at a different temperature so let's say if it is 100 degrees c it will be one atmospheric it is if it is 75 degrees c you can see it's a lower pressure so now if we have liquid in a container and we start to reduce the pressure when we go below the vapor pressure we can see now it's all will the vapor will start and will form inside this liquid now if you increase the pressure back again all the vapor will change back to liquids what does it mean? Mean all the vapor bubbles which is, was inside the liquid will collapse and will leave a void in its place. If the bubble is surrounded by liquid, then the liquid will come from all directions and fill the void. But if it is adjacent to a metal surface, what will happen is that you will have a vacuum beside the metal which will force the metal to go into the vacuum or have a pitting or some as if it is eating into your metal. So at the end, if you have vapor collapse beside your metal, you will find very rough surface because of the collapse of those bubbles. Now we'll move to another thing, which is velocity of liquids or fluids in a pipe. The velocity in a pipe depends on the cross section. Meaning if you have a specific meter cube per hour going from this end, the same meter cube per hour should go from the other end. The meter cube per hour, which is a flow rate, is equal the cross section multiply the velocity. Meter cube per hour equal meter square, which is the area, multiplied by the speed which is meter per hour so at any specific cross section you can find the velocity if you know what is your flow rate so assume we have three meter cube per hour going from that side on the pipe the pipe cross section change from four inch to two inch or different and then go back to six or whatever What's happening is that if you calculate the velocity here, you divide the meter cube hour per the area, and that is your velocity. Meaning at the smaller cross section, the fluid has to move very quick, quicker than at a bigger cross section. So V1 will be small, V2 will go up, V3 will go back down again. Now let's look at the pressure in a pipe. The pressure in a pipe can be determined or find out by Brinoli principle or equation. It means or it states the pressure plus half V square plus rho G H equal constant. So the same value exactly the same at different location of your pipe so what's happened here is that if your 
the same liquid because we're talking about liquid not gases so the density will not change from one spot to another in your piping system so if we simplify the equation and we assume the h equal h because we are the same elevation we can reduce it to be pressure plus half v square is constant so this is the simplified form the pressure plus half the square of the velocity is a constant so if we look at a, a pipe with a different cross section as you can see four inch then two inch then four inch again maybe then we can look at the velocity and the pressure in this section and then when it goes into the smaller section the velocity will increase that means the pressure will be decreased so the velocity goes up the vapor sorry the pressure goes down now let's look at a restriction in the line so like an orifice so your flow goes through the orifice and continue to be chalked a little bit downstream of the orifice in a place which is the lowest smallest cross section we call it vena contract so the pressure here will go through this area where it's lowest pressure value and your velocity will go here will be your maximum velocity so at vena contractor is your lowest pressure so let's draw the pressure profile the pressure goes and then it drops across your orifice then drops even further down line in the vena contractor and then you recover some of the pressure and it goes as p2 this the difference between p1 and p2 in this case is the energy lost to move the fluid across the orifice if we have a series of orifices with different dimensions different openings you can expect you have each one followed by a small vena contractor and then if you take all p1 and p2 and try to find one orifice which will make the p1 goes to p2 same as those multiple orifice you can see the depth here is very low than all those small depths so you have small depth because of each vena contractor but because you have a very smaller opening you will have a deeper drop in your pressure if you look at this valve it's a globe valve your fluid goes through the valve and then goes down in a circle spiral movement then it goes up in 90 degrees elbow and then it goes through your plug and seat where you have a restriction and then struggle back again to go change direction and go out so there is multiple orifices if you can see multiple orifice multiple places where you have a pressure reduction in the pressure of the flow so let's look at one flow our fluid vapor pressure is far below is the lowest value of a pressure inside your valve so your liquid goes all the way as liquid and exit as a liquid now we use a different liquid the vapor pressure of this liquid is a little bit higher than the lowest pressure at in the valve so in this area part of your liquid will change into vapor and when it goes back out from your valve because p2 is higher than the vapor pressure all your vapor will change to liquid back again so in this area you will find bubble formation and then collapse this is what we call it cavitation now we have a third liquid the third liquid the vapor pressure is higher than the exit pressure or our p2 
does mean mean that we have a vapor formation but it will never collapse back again so it will be out as vapor this is flashing now we have one liquid but we have a different valves so our butterfly valves because you have the differential pressure losses in only two places and the ball valve the same but the glue valve you have many multiple places where you lose small pieces of your pressure so the butterfly and the ball valve will have a greater depth in the pressure than the globe meaning if you have this kind of a liquid goes into butterfly valve or a ball valve you may have cavitation but the globe valve will not cavitate now we take the things a little bit further this is not a standard trim this is what we call it anti-cavitation trim in fissure control emerson they call it cavitrol trim they have many stages one two three and so on not only fissure do it but other would do do the same almost anti-cavitation trim but let's compare between a globe valve and a butterfly valve both of them from fissure control you can look at a value here called recovery coefficient or pressure recovery coefficient it's 0.99 for the cavitrol but it is 0.52 for the butterfly valve the bigger this value the better is the valve against cavitation so how now to check if your valve cavitate you have some characteristic to make the cavitation forms. The first thing is the valve recovery coefficient, which we have just seen now, if you have 0.9 or 0.7 or 0.5. Fluid vapor pressure. If you have some liquid which has a vapor pressure cross close to your exit pressure, close to your inlet pressure, then you can may have cavitation then the third point is your inlet and outlet pressure this equation will tell us if there will be cavitation happening but we don't use it only for cavitation check but we also use it for a different purpose when you size your valve for a liquid service you want to know if your cavitation form because that will affect your cv calculated why because at some places in your valve the liquid is no more liquid it will become vapor meaning the volume had been increased that means the restriction is higher so you need to open the valve a little bit more or you have a bigger valve or you can say my cv had been changed we will see this in full when we go into another video for valve sizing for liquid services so you can see here this table gives you uh, some kind of an idea about what is your valve recovery coefficient if it is a globe valve versus um, linear equal percent with us so we talked about the flashing and we said our liquid goes into the inlet of the valve but when it's leave the valve it is completely vapor have you seen anything like that yes you have seen it in fact if you are in any plant you have a steam in a pipe then you may see the steam trap specifically if it is thermal thermal steam trap thermodynamic steam trap so the steam condensates will be collected and goes to the steam trap to go back to your system or sometimes if it is leaked to the atmosphere you can see here it's go to the air as a vapor in fact what goes in is a condensate in a liquid phase but when it's cross the steam trap 
to the atmosphere, whereas the pressure is one atmospheric and the temperature is 184 C, because that's the pressure is 10 bars, then the immediately the condensate will change to vapor. Other application, which is very tough, if you have natural gas or some gases from a well, you have a condensate pot where you collect all the condensate. Now, the problem here is you have a level control on the condensate. You need to get those condensate out. But the problem is you have a very high pressure in this pot. Then in this, this device here or the vessel, when you have the high pressure, you have a very low pressure at that end. So your condensate will go through your valve from very high pressure tank to a very low line. Most of the cases, this valve will have a severe cavitation and flashing problems. How do you know if it is flashing and cavitation? Flashing is very smooth. The damage to your plug is very smooth. The cavitation is very rough fitting from the cavitation. Mitigation of cavitation and flashing. First thing is to predict if you will have a cavitation. Flashing is obvious because P2 is lower than your vapor pressure, so it will be flashing anyways. So we'll see how to deal with it. But there is two ways to deal with it. You improve your valve selection to withstand the damage from cavitation. Or you can change your design to eliminate from the source the presence of cavitation. This most of the time it's very hard, but in some of the application you can do it by design. Just I'm putting it here because something to think about. So the first thing in the valve, the first thing is to use a globe better than ball butterfly. Then look at the globe valve with a better recovery coefficient. And then you have to check trim material. Use a very hard trim material. So don't use stainless steel, use tungsten tin carbide and so on. Look at the recommendation from your vendor. Then the next step, use valve special trim, like the we've seen anti-cavitation trim or multiple stage valve. Then at the far end, we can use a style and angle valve, which is most of the cases for flashing application, we use an angle valve. The system configuration, as we said, you may be able to install a fixed orifice downstream of the valve, which will take all the beating of the cavitation. So your valve will be have a less severe cavitation forming in it. Again, this is something that has to be done with engineering people and try to see if it is working or not, because sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Here is a shape of different anti-cavitation trim. This is specifically for ball valve. This is the globe valves. The cage, as you can see, have multiple orifices, multiple opening with even different stages. So you go from bigger to a smaller to smallest opening. So instead of having one big opening, you divide the flow into smaller areas so you can have multiple stages in the pressure drop. As you can see here, you have in one of those opening, it's a bigger opening of cross section or diameter, and then it goes into a smaller diameter. So we know that there will be a formation of cavitation, but in this case, because you have stages for the pressure drop, you may have a better chance that the valve will not cavitate. This is a different style. In the auto-recirculation valve, 
This is a mechanical auto recirculation valve from your wheel. What's happening that you have multi-stage pressure drops. In most of the cases, you have a high pressure from the pump outlet and you want to return it back to your tank, which is most of the time it's atmospheric or very low pressure. So you have a very huge differential pressure. So in this case, what they did, they have multiple orifices with multiple sizes. So the multi-drop trim, it had multiple plugs. Each one has its own orifice. Different style. This is your angle valve. What's happened here is that you know that there is a formation of your vapor. So the problem is, Try to get all of them in the middle. So when it's collapsed, it will collapse away from the body of the valve, away from your piping. So the damage will be less. How you can check the cavitation? The problem is you can't check if your valve cavitate unless you know its recovery coefficient. But you will not know the recovery coefficient until you actually select your valve. So it's kind of a recycling thing. So in the beginning, you assume a recovery coefficient and then you calculate the CV. Based on the CV, select a valve type and so on. And then take the actual valve recovery coefficient and put it back into the system and the equations and recalculate the CV and recheck for cavitation. If there is no problem with the valve selection, we are happy. If not, then go to check a different type of valves or a different trim and so on. Thanks for watching and please leave a comment. And this is a part of our series all about an instrumentation. Link in the description. Thank you and see you in the next video.